Let's take a tour of the RFID demo LabVIEW project. Here I have the ID12LA RFID reader attached to connector B. And here's the hidden wiring underneath the RFID reader. I'll be using these two RFID tag cards for the demonstration. Now let me acquaint you with the front panel display. This array shows the bytes as read from the RFID reader. This Boolean indicator shows the state of the reader's tag detected line, and this string indicator shows these data bytes as an ASCII string. All right, I'm waving my first RFID tag nearby. Tag detected goes active, and we see the data string translated into ASCII. So this byte, that byte, the, the all match up. Here's hex 30, looks like a zero, and so on. Now watch carefully. I've just waved my second RFID tag, and we see that the value has changed. Here's my first tag again. We're back to the original string value. I'll stop the VI and start taking a look at the details. This Boolean indicator is straightforward. That's from the Digital Input Express VI. Let's take a look at how this character string is read. Under my Rio, I started out originally with the UART Express VI, and I set this up to read characters, and then I'm going to look at view code, and this is the underlying code that's being configured by this Express VI. It's based on the Visa Configure serial port. Here I have my specific parameters for the RFID reader demo, and then we also read characters by indicating how many characters we'd like to read. I'm going to find that it's a little more convenient to use the, the form that says read all available. This makes use of a property node to, de to determine the number of characters pending in the buffer. All right, here's the specifics that I needed for the RFID reader demo. You can pick whether or not you're using the A or B connector on my Rio. For the RFID reader, I needed 9600 baud and 8 data bits. I can go with the default of no parity and one stop bit. Flow control, we don't need that. The RFID reader uses the termination character at the end, that's end of text, hexadecimal 03, and I've got that one enabled here. Incidentally, you might be curious to know how you can get that little X to show up indicating hexadecimal. Well, here's the hexadecimal display, and then back on appearance, I've got show radix ticked and so that takes care of displaying the little X in front. Now once the UART is configured we dive into this while loop. It's just continually watching the UART buffer and checking to see if we've read 16 characters yet. We do that with the property node. I attach that to the task that was generated by Visa Configure Serial Port and hunt through here for serial settings and there we can pick out the number of bytes available at the serial port. This property node returns the number of bytes that are available inside the UART buffer, and then I compare that value against 16. So if I have at least 16 characters, then we go ahead and execute the true subpanel of this case structure. If it's false, then nothing happens. We just pass the error cluster right through. Then Visa Read says take the number of bytes that are in fact available at the buffer and read those bytes into an array. Actually, it's reading it out in string format, and then I can convert that to a byte array for display here. Let me show you where this string to byte array node is located. It's under strings, under path array and string to byte. That's where that's located. Now I'm also using string subset that's available here. String subset is looking at the array of bytes and going to the element number one, because we the array starts with element zero. I begin at element one and then grab 10 characters from that string and display that as an ASCII value right here. Now to wrap up, let's take a look at propagating the error cluster. It all begins back here for configuring the port, pass that through the various elements, or that together with the stop button back on the front panel. 
So hitting stop or an air condition breaks me out of the while loop, pass through the air handler, do a MyRio reset, and here's where I'm pacing the loop at 10 milliseconds per loop pass.